All right, what's up everyone? It's Chris here. We are checking out the GoPro Hero 9 today. We're gonna do a direct comparison against the Hero 8. And we're gonna do some stabilization tests, try it all out on a bike. I wanna see what improvements they've got for this year, whether it's worth the upgrade from the 8, and see some of the size comparisons, because this thing is a lot bigger than the new one. And hopefully it's not too noisy with the wind noise. All right, so this is the case it comes in. They are shipped like this. They just have a simple paper packaging. Once you open it up, you will see your manuals at the top telling you to subscribe to GoPro. If you purchase it on GoPro.com right now, they give you $100 off if you sign up for the yearly membership, which is $50. So essentially you get $50 off. You get your standard little sticky mount, um, anti-vibration mount, and one arm, and that's it. Um, you can get the bundle, which would come with the floaty mount and a couple other mounts. But here is the GoPro itself, and battery is already in it. Obviously the screen is the big improvement of this one. And you got a much larger back screen and a much larger, well actually just an improved, a front color screen. Which is pretty impressive. So. The Hero 8, for comparison's sake, is much smaller. The sensor size is smaller than the new Hero 9, which one, allows us to film up to 5K plus larger individual photos. But what will be nice about the larger sensor, you should be able to get better um, low light performance out of the GoPro as well. So with the Hero 9, you still get a front display telling you everything you need to know. Obviously, it's not as bold as the Hero 8. So there is some definite size difference between the two. The Hero 9 is definitely longer, wider, taller, only by a small amount. It is nice as well that the Hero 9 can have a removable lens. Not that I've ever damaged a lens, but it's definitely handy for filters and or if you did damage the lens. The front screen obviously is going to be nice for when you set it up on like a chest mount or a helmet mount and you might not be able to see it. You can easily ask someone to have a glance and tell them whether it's in focus or not. They have the same mount systems as each other, same locations for the record and the menu button, and um, a few other menu options now. So as you can see, they have two different menu options, um, pretty similar between the two. Nothing too crazy different there. Okay, so as you can see, we have got ready. We're gonna go for a ride and test out both cameras, see if anything has really changed in the operation or video quality. Obviously, the Hero 9 can go up to 5K. I won't be recording in that because I don't have anything powerful enough to run it. And then the testing that horizon leveling built into the Hero 9. The Hero 8 does have that feature. It's just through the GoPro app, so you have to offload. You actually have to offload it onto the GoPro app, then manually choose horizon leveling. So it is there, it's just not built in. Okay, right, so I actually have both GoPros running right now. Right off the bat, the Hero 9 is actually significantly heavier than the Hero 8. Um, something I would expect would be bothersome about that would be when you have it on a helmet mount. You can definitely feel the weight of these things, so a heavier unit is gonna weigh you down more. Um, the stabilization's better, but if you have more weight, you're also gonna get more shake on, say, a chest mount or any mount you're holding it to. Um, right now we have 4K, 24 frames a second, and wide mode. That is what I normally ride at. And we're gonna put the Hero 8 on the chest first and go for a ride and check it out and then we'll do the same for the Hero 9 and then we'll change some settings. All right, so this is the GoPro Hero 8. 4K, 24 frames a second. I chose this trail because it's pretty rough. It's a fairly new trail. Might not be the flowiest, but it's gonna show off the stabilization quite well. As well, I left all the audio and video settings from factory. I know most of the time they will be tweaked. Uh, I might check out the Loam Ranges video if you want to know how to set up 
a GoPro to look its best. All right, so this is the Hero 9 Black. So again, we're at 4K, 24 frames a second wide with boost on. And we had boost on on the 8 as well. I forgot to mention that. Normally I do not run with boost on while mountain biking. And it's the same video again, but with boost off on the GoPro Hero 9. This would be normally my typical setup on Hero 8. And now we switch to the Hero 8 boost off 4K 24 frames a second. Whoa, almost lost it. So definitely the size comparison, this is heavier. The battery makes up for it though. I would definitely take a longer battery in the Hero 8. I've ran out of this many times and need to get a second battery. The back screen being much larger, I think would be handier, a lot more options there. It's just gonna be easier, easier user interface with the larger screen. This front screen is really the big, I don't know, the DJI Osmo did it first and I never bought one. I didn't see that as a huge benefit. With GoPro footage especially, I find as long as you're not in linear mode or narrow, you're probably gonna be able to get the shot just by pointing it towards yourself. You're not gonna miss any of the action, but it will come in handy, definitely. A couple other features, they've updated Hype Smooth, so it's supposed to be a little bit better. I don't know if it uses less crop. We'll have a look at the video comparisons. Definitely looking at the screens when tilting. The horizon definitely moves a lot less on the Hero 9. Um, again, that's just a feature baked into it and it's stuck on linear right now, which I don't really know why because does anyone use GoPro in linear? The other thing I like they've updated is Time Warp 3.0, so you actually have audio when you pause the time lapse and go into live video modes and then go back into it. It did really make no sense that you could put it back to regular video pace, but have no audio to go with it. You just give a thumbs up in regular speed as opposed to time warp. So that's a nice feature. Overall build quality looks pretty much the exact same. Obviously they have a new drain port on it. Um, so you have a much larger drain port here for the audio to uh, clear out water wise when you're using it in the water, which will be really nice. This one definitely takes a, a couple seconds to catch back up and doesn't sound like your ears are blocked. Pretty much my take on this so far is if you have anything older than a Hero 8, the Hero 9 is going to be a massive improvement. 
see, even from the Hero 7, you're going to get huge leaps and bounds. If you have the Hero 8, it's definitely going to be questionable whether or not it's worth it. I think you should put it up for sale. If you sell it, maybe it's worth it. It's definitely worth getting the GoPro Plus membership to get that discount on these ones. Overall, they're both good cameras, and I'm still not sure which one's worth it more. Hope this video helps you decide yourselves. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. Thanks.